Oh, he's trying to kill me. This is awesome. Welcome back, Slackers. My name is Zacho Slacker, and today we're back in the underwater world that is Subnautica. Now, in today's episode, we did promise that we're going to build the prawn, and we are going to do that. Now, outside of episode, what I've actually gone and done is got together plasteel inlet and lubricant, because let's be honest, you've seen that before, and I, I just I don't want to be repeating myself all the time. So let's see what else we need to get to actually make the prawn. Now, we need to get some uranium and some aluminium oxide crystal. And now at this stage, I've done a bit of research on uranium and a little bit of research on the aluminium oxide crystal. We're gonna start off with the uranium. Now we need to go down to the blood kelp zone and look around on the surface of the blood, um, on the floor of the blood kelp zone. And that will actually be where all the uranium crystals are. And there's like crystals that we need to get. Once we've got the crystals, you need three of them to turn into actual uranium. So, yeah, let's uh, let's go out there and do that. We'll see you at the blood kelp zone. Okay, so we've officially made it to the blood kelp zone. We're going to jump in our sea moth and we're going to have a bit of a look around and see if we can find what we're looking for. Because yeah, I, I don't really honestly know what we're looking for. To be completely honest with you, other than the fact that we're looking for some form of uranium deposit which is supposed to be on the seafloor around here so let's jump out and crack some of these stones titanium no um, I'm hoping they'd be green and glowing but they're not that would have been so much handier if that was the case is that an egg no, it is it's a sand shark egg we'll take it we'll take it Sand shark, Ooh. sand shark there I think. Let's head back to the sea moth and we'll keep traveling around in the sea moth. I'll report back when I either find something interesting or if I find actual uranium deposit things. Well slackers, I think Subnautica has officially had it. We've gone through four or five updates and yeah, it didn't seem to have any issues up until now, and now uh, the game file isn't loading at all. We had some issues with the sound bug, and then that was that. It is early development after all, but I think that's going to have to mark the end of this series. We're going to have to move on to series two, which is going to be a hardcore series. Um, I'm super sorry that we couldn't even finish off this episode. I was so excited to see the prawn um, and have a play around with it. What I think I might do to cap this episode off is actually uh, go into basic mode uh, where I don't actually have to build it and we can just have a quick play around with it and then we'll move on to series two which will be the hardcore Subnautica series very very soon. Alright Slackers, well I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode, um, we're just going to have a bit of a muck around with the prawn now and see what else we can see. We'll see you on the other side. Alright so as promised I've come into this episode um, after the episode has crashed, I've gone into creative and I've built the prawn here. I've given it some upgrades, some board, distance captain. upgrades sort of thing. So we're going to go have a bit of an explore and see what we can find. Yeah. So we've made our way to the front of the Aurora and we have found the inactive lava zone here. And we're trying to work our way down even deeper. Um, yeah, it's not very easy to see much here. So we're going to keep going for deep. Like a big drop off like here. Oh god. Whoa, we're nearly at a thousand meters now. Alright, we'll see you when we actually find the active lava zone. The colour of the water's changed. I think we've made it to somewhere. Oh, oh, computer failure. Okay. We've made it to a very different looking area straight away. This looks more like an active lava zone. I think we've made it. I think this is the active lava zone. Yep, massive rays. This is very, very cool. Oh, look at this. Oh! I can't wait to get here in the hardcore Subnautica series. It's going to be awesome. If, if I can survive that long, that is. This is 
amazing. What on earth is that? I think it's the Sea Dragon Leviathan. It is? Oh my god, check this bad boy out. Look at the size of him! He's awesome. Oh, he's trying to kill me! This is awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, screw it. Let's get out and have a look what we have in terms of equipment. Yep. Let's uh, let's pop this down real quick because I want to actually get a scanner and try and scan that thing. Now I understand it was not the plan for this episode, but I don't think I'm ever going to get this chance again. So here we go. <laughs> I know we're in creative mode and we can't die, but um, yeah, I'm scanning it. Why not? Let's scan it. <laughs> it's weird that a creature that lives this far down would need arms. You know, it's just a bit peculiar. He seems to just be, like, drifting away from me. He's listening lazily to the left! This guy knows some moves. He doesn't seem extremely aggressive. He seems pretty... Did that thing just swim out of his mouth? That's so funny. Okay. Sea Dragon Leviathan. He's being very placid right now. This thing is huge! Oh my giddy aunt! Let's, um, let's have a look around. I can swim in his face. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh my god. Look at this thing. Oh. Okay, game glitched. What hevs? I wondered why he was glitching away, but anyway, we got the scan. This thing is just amazing. Wow. Thank you, Subnautica, for releasing this. Let's have a read of that PDA. Uh, where is it? Logs, no, logs, no, no. Databank, here we go. Alien life forms, fauna, carnivores, sea dragon leviathan. <laughs> this is so cool. A uh, colossal aquatic species, well adapted to volcanic environments. Well, no doubt. Scanned specimen, <laughs> Scanned specimen measured 70 meters long. The only leviathan specimen encountered on 4,546B with true forearms suggest genetic divergence occurrence long ago, occurred long ago. Forearms used for both propulsion and defense, extreme adaption to high temperature environments. The sea dragon can launch magma, magma projectiles when its prey attempts to flee. Prey? Everything. Predators? Not much. Assessment? Avoid. And you know what? The threat level isn't actually that high. I thought it'd be higher. But there you go. Alright Slackers, well I think that does it for today's episode. Um, I know I didn't go to plan. I mean we played around with the prawn and we scanned the sea dragon of the Viathon which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I've had a good time with this series. I look forward to doing the hardcore series with you Slackers. It's going to be pretty epic and amazing, especially if we can get to this point in the hardcore series. Um, we'll explain a little bit more about the hardcore series when we actually do start it. Alright Slackers, well, I think we'll leave it at this view today. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you later Slackers. Bye bye!